I recently reviewed the Lenovo X1 Carbon, but let's take it up a notch today with the X1 Yoga. It's now available, and today I'll tell you what's good and what's bad. Stay tuned. So before we get started, let me talk a little bit about the Yoga. This is the third generation version versus the Carbon, which is now in its sixth generation. And these are basically sister devices. And what's really cool here is years ago when convertibles came out, there was a huge choice you had to make. You get the convertible, but you had to sacrifice a lot of performance and features, or you can get the non-convertible and get all the cool stuff. That's changed now. In 2018, you can basically get the same laptop, but one that's a convertible and one that's not. So the choice is up to you. And that's kind of what we have here. Now there are some subtle differences and I'll go over those at the end of the video if you have to choose between the Carbon and the Yoga. But let's get into the Yoga's feature set and see what's new. So here it is, the X1 Yoga for 2018, and there's a lot to like about this device. This is a premium business ultrabook that's also convertible and also has a pen. And so it's for a specific group of users out there, but there's a lot to like here. First of all, let's talk about this display. So like all Lenovo stuff, you get a lot of options. You can do full HD and of course go up to WQHD. And now you can also get the Dolby HDR version, just like you can on the Carbon. And that's what we find here. This HDR display can do all sorts of neat things, including go up to 500 nits of brightness and color accuracy is superb. Just like on the Carbon, we're getting 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB, which I've never really seen in any laptop before. So this is a very color accurate screen. It's great for people who work in video or just wanna do photo editing or just really want something that looks great for movies. Now, unlike the Carbon, there's two differences here with this display. First of all, you can get it with touch and that makes sense since this uses a pen. Also, it's non-gloss. Now, it is a little bit glossy, but compared to the Carbon, this one is much better, just way less reflection. So those are two core differences with this display that makes it a bit different. Now, the other thing is the bezel. This has obviously got a larger bezel compared to the Carbon, and that's fine. This is meant to be a tablet too, and that's the reason for it. Let's take a look here at the Yoga's deck. So you got the standard Lenovo keyboard, although this is called the Wave keyboard, and we'll show you why when it converts to a tablet later on. But it's the same layout as the Carbon, and the response time is very good on this. Feels very much like the Carbon, but it is slightly softer. That's not good or bad, it's just slightly different, but I actually really like typing on this just as much as I do on the Carbon. Coming down to the trackpad area, you do have a slightly larger trackpad compared to the Carbon, and that's because it's just got a wider footprint here. You also have the buttons here for the track point system. This is a full precision touchpad, so it's very good. Again, nice soft click. I really like what Lenovo has done here with their trackpad. Pure precision drivers, no more synaptics, very good. Finally, we do have the standard fingerprint reader. And if you saw in my Carbon review, I'm not a fan of this fingerprint reader. It works, it works with Windows Hello. You get a cool little LED there. It's just, it's kind of a pain to use. You have to put your finger on there and it takes a few seconds to read. Uh, your smartphone is gonna be way better than this. So I wish it would do a better fingerprint reader, but it works. You also have the new ThinkPad logo. So again, nice black, very minimal and just modern looking. I think it looks excellent. You have a little LED that lights up as well. So pretty cool design. Coming to the exterior of the device, and you still get that deep, deep black that uh, Lenovo is really known for, the ThinkPad line. Again, new logo system looks really excellent here. Now, if you don't like this color and you really wanna be young and brash, you can go for the new silver version. I would actually prefer the silver. I know that's uh, sacrilege for a lot of Lenovo people, but the problem with the black one is it does pick up a lot of fingerprints and grease. Uh, for some people, you're gonna have to wipe this down frequently if that bothers you. Otherwise, you can get this or stick with the silver version, which won't have that issue. All right, let's take a look at ports here. So on the left side, we have two USB Type-C. Again, Thunderbolt 3, full four PCIe lanes. That means you can use an external GPU with this. Wouldn't necessarily use this laptop for gaming, but you totally can. Most games today are GPU dependent. So you can plug this into a Razer Core with a GeForce 1080 Ti and you do really well. It'd just be super expensive. USB type A on the side here. Flipping around to the right hand side, you still have a full HDMI jack here. Now you don't get the full port replicator that's found on the car, but that's a difference. You also have another standard USB 3.1 port here. And you do have this little Ethernet port that doesn't look like an Ethernet one because there's a dongle that Lenovo will sell you. You also have the three and a half millimeter headphone jack and the power button on the side. After all, this turns into a tablet, so you wanna make sure that power button is always accessible. So that's another difference between this and the Carbon. 
All right, let's start talking about what really makes this laptop unique. And first of all, there's gonna be this thing here. This is the pen. Pulls right out of the chassis. And this is an inherently cool thing. This makes a lot of difference for me as someone who doesn't use a pen but wants to have one on occasion. So it's an active pen. So when you put it into the system here, it actually charges it up. In fact, that's about 15 seconds of being in there. It'll be charged for, I believe it's 100 minutes, which is just kind of weird. In other words, it'll always be charged. If you just throw it in there for a few seconds, you're always good. But it's just really nice to pull it out there. And for those curious, it is a Wacom AES system. So that's different than what Surface uses, which is Intrigue. That means you can't take a Surface pen and use it on this device, but it's its own system. Wacom AES is very popular. It's a very good system, uh, has very good response time. And you're talking about 2,048 levels of pressure. That fits in between what HP uses at 1,028 levels and of course what the new Surface Pro and Surface Book use, which is over 4,000 levels. So it's a very good pen though, and we'll show more of that soon. Turn to the bottom, nothing unique here. You do have your intake vents as well as a bunch of screws. You can remove this panel and swap out the SSD if you want to, but you probably don't want to. It's a very good SSD. And you also have your speakers here on the bottom. You can see some on the bottom, some on the edge. Better speaker system than the carbon though, and that's actually a big difference between the two of these. Okay, let's talk about specifications and features. Like all of Lenovo's stuff, you can configure this however you want. So you're getting an Intel Core i5 processor here. That is the eighth generation. It is quad core, but again, 15 watt here. And you're gonna get all sorts of cool benefits with that, especially for multi-core performance. You go up to a Core i7. And just like the Carbon, you're gonna get two options there. You can get the 8550U, which is pretty standard, or you can go for the 8650U, which is the more powerful one. That's also found in Surface Book 2. That thing can clock up to 4.2 gigahertz, and it's an outstanding processor. That's also the one that comes with V Pro. And if you had to choose one, it would be that. For RAM, you're gonna get eight or 16 gig configurations, nothing unique there, DDR3, 2133 megahertz, so pretty good RAM. That is a low power one, so it helps with battery life. I know some people ask me why these don't ship with DDR4. DDR4 is awesome, but it's also not very good for battery life, not yet at least. So that's why companies still use DDR3. Now, when it comes to storage, you get 256, 512, or up to one terabyte if you want to, SSD, PCIe. Again, this one is using the Samsung PM981 chip in there. That's an awesome SSD, folks. I didn't even know actually it existed until a couple of weeks ago. It's one of the first laptops that feature it. And you're talking over 3,000 for the read speeds and over 2,000 for writes. Uh, really good performance here. You can swap it out, of course, but I see no reason why you'd want to. Now, when it comes to wireless options, you're gonna get an Intel 8265 chip in here. That's a very good one for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And just like all things Lenovo, later on, they will be offering an LTE advanced option with the modem built in there. Um, I wish you could order that right now. Apparently you can't, so you just have to wait for it. But if you want that one, you can definitely get that as well. Okay, let's talk about battery and performance. So in the Yoga, you're talking a 54 watt hour battery. That's slightly smaller than what's found in the carbon, but that's okay, it's not a big deal here. Now, you're still talking around eight hours of battery life. That's with the Core i7 and this full HDR display. Now that's gonna vary depending obviously what you're doing and whether or not you're ramping that display up to 500 nits, which would drain the battery much quicker. But for normal office usage and productivity stuff, yeah, you're getting around eight hours, maybe even more if you put that brightness down. This does have USB fast charge as well, and it's a 65 watt charger, which is really nice. So it's not big and it'll allow you to charge this up pretty quickly. So let's talk about the banner feature of the Yoga. Well, it converts into a tablet. And what's really neat about this design is, like I said, years ago, there used to be a lot of compromise, but you can buy this device, use it as a laptop 98% of the time. And just once in a while, when you want to flip to presentation mode or turn to a tablet, well, you get that feature here. And that's what's really neat about it. So you get this thing called a wave keyboard. It's sort of Lenovo's little trick here that when you flip it over, the keys retract into its body. So when you're holding it, you don't feel the buttons. And that sounds like not a big deal, but it actually is a big deal for making this feel much more like a tablet when in use. Now, of course, you also get that pen. Now, this pen is pretty small and it's not something you wanna use long-term. And if you're an artist, you probably don't wanna use it either. But if you're gonna use it to say, highlight stuff in a document or sign a document, it is awesome to have, I really like it. And don't forget, it is Wacom AES, so you can buy Lenovo's bigger pen to carry around with you, or use the Wacom Bamboo Ink Pen that's available now as well, and that works totally well. You just would have to carry it separately, there's no way you can attach, so trade off. 
Now using this as a tablet is actually pretty fun. It's about a half pound heavier than the carbon at three pounds. And that's a little bit of a difference, but it's not too bad. I really liked using this though, say in presentation mode. When you go to watch a movie, you can flip that screen around. And that's also cool too, because the bottom of the laptop can get a little warm. So let's talk about thermals. It's not a hot laptop per se. The eighth generation stuff is very good, but it gets a little bit warm. But now if you flip it to presentation mode to watch a movie, well, you don't have that issue, right? Plus your speakers now fire upwards. And the audio is already very good on this compared to the carbon. I like these speakers a lot. All right, buying decision time. If you had to buy one, the carbon or the yoga, which would it be? Surprisingly, I'm gonna go with the yoga. And the reason I say surprisingly is I'm not really into convertible devices. They're cool, they're neat, but I'm totally fine with the standard laptop. Even Surface Book 2, which I love, is something I just keep as a laptop almost all the time. Having said that, there's some real benefits to the yoga over the carbon. For instance, the display is more anti-glare, and to me that's actually a big deal. It's also, of course, touch, and you can't get the HDR version in touch for some reason on the carbon. Now, I'm not a huge pen user myself, but having this little thing built into the side of the device is super cool. When I wanna sign a document quickly or just highlight something or even just draw, it's just nice to have, and I don't feel like you're compromising anything by having it built in. The keyboard deck is also larger. You get a little bit more room here for your palms. And again, that's a comfort issue. I find typing on this just a little bit better because I have more room for my wrists. You also get a slightly larger trackpad. And again, that's a nice difference to have. I would rather have a larger trackpad than not. Now, I would be totally fine getting rid of the track point system and making it even larger without those buttons, but I won't touch that one. I know a lot of you will revolt against it. Still though, overall, this is a better device. Now it is heavier and it's slightly more expensive. So this starts around $1,400, $1,450. That's for the Core i5 and $256. Um, for the HDR display, it's an extra $180. But I think if you had to choose one, you'd get much more longevity out of this device. And if I had to pick one myself, I'd probably configure it as the silver with the Core i7, and I'd wait for that LTE model. That's me. I may actually order that, though. This is just a really cool device. I think you get a lot of longevity out of it. So there's a quick look at the new X1 Yoga third generation. Now, if you have any questions about this device, leave them in the comments below. If you want more information, you can find it in the description, or you can also find my full review at Windows Central. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.